over Schedule EIC, Earned Income Credit. So this is a tax form uh, for taxpayers to uh, complete that accompanies IRS Form 1040, your income tax return, uh, so that you can document your qualifying child or children for purposes of claiming the Earned Income Credit. So this, this will go along with your Earned Income Credit Worksheet uh, and this doesn't calculate how much of the credit you're eligible for. This simply gives the Internal Revenue Service a documentation that your child does indeed meet the criteria uh, to be able to claim the EIC. So there are a couple of things we should note before beginning this tax form. So uh, we'll just go through everything that's, that it says at the top. Uh, you'll need to see the instructions for IRS Form 1040 line 27 to make sure that A, you can take the earned income credit in the first place, and B, you have a qualifying child. So you can take the earned income credit without a qualifying child if you meet certain criteria, but that's not the purpose of this form. Uh, if you meet the earned income credit criteria without a qualifying child, you don't need to complete Schedule EIC. So second, you need to make sure that your child's name on line one and the social security number on line two agree with the child's actual social security card. Uh, incorrect information, missing information, those are all things that the IRS, uh, that may cause the IRS to disallow your tax credit. And then on top of it, uh, the IRS uh, pays very close attention to the earned income credit because it is very prone to tax fraud. Uh, basically, people that claim the earned income credit uh, without actually meeting the criteria. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a moment. Uh, so if your claim is disallowed and you claim a credit that the IRS disallows, then you may have your EIC reduced, that may impact your tax bill, you may owe taxes when you file your tax return. Uh, if you have a child who meets the conditions to be a qualifying child, but they do not have a social security uh, number, then uh, you may need to do a little bit more digging, but uh, it, it appears that your child probably uh, would need to have a social security number to be eligible for the earned income credit. So you can't you also can't claim the credit under certain circumstances. So if the child did not live with you for more than half of the tax year is probably one of the biggest ones, especially for uh, families uh, where both parents are, live in two different households. Uh, so only one of those parents can claim the earned income credit in a given year. And even if there's a year in which uh, both parents can claim that the child lived with them for more than half of the tax year. Uh, the IRS has tiebreaker rules to figure out which uh, parent is able to actually claim the in, uh, earned income credit. So if your child did not live with you for more than half of the year, and we're talking 183 days plus uh, out of a 365 day tax year, then you cannot claim the credit. Uh, if your child does not have a social security number, if, if your child instead has an individual taxpayer ID number, if your child uh, does not uh, has an adoption tax ID number, you, you're probably not going to be able to take the credit either. Uh, unless during the year your child is able to receive a social security number. Um, if you do um, take the earned income credit without being eligible, uh, then there are two categories where the IRS may disallow you from taking the credit in future tax years. So the first situation, if the IRS investigates and determines that your claim uh, was due to uh, negligence or willful disregard of the tax rules, uh, then they may disallow you your credit claim for up to ten or two years afterwards. If they if the IRS investigates and finds uh, you liable for a fraudulent claim, then you would be disallowed for up to 10 years. 
So, uh, and this includes future tax years where you may otherwise be eligible. The IRS has actually put out uh, guidance in numerous places stating uh, that this is one of the most abuse prone uh, tax credits that they look for every year. And if you don't send the IRS complete information, then it will take uh, the IRS longer. You may have to file another form to uh, claim the tax credit to provide information that you should have provided in this form. So make sure you get this form correct the first time. It's not very difficult and we're about to go through this tax form right now. So there are a total of six lines and again this is to document each child's uh, eligibility. So the first thing you'll note is that there are only three columns for children's names and, and information. And the reason why is because the maximum EIC is for up to three children. If you have four or five, that's great, but you don't get any more of a tax credit for more than three children. So uh, if there's any doubt in your mind about your being able to claim the tax credit for one of your children, Pick the three that are most likely to be to be considered eligible without any issues, right? So, uh, as you'll see in line one, we wrote our child's first name and last name, Susan Doe. All right. At, at the top of the form, I, sh I, I should uh, go over this first. So the name is shown on the tax return. Your auto, uh, your tax software will probably auto populate this. So our hero, John Doe his social security number, and then there is a checkbox here. If you're separated from your spouse, filing a separate return and you meet the EIC requirements, again, uh, you know, only one spouse may claim uh, under most circum, uh, only one parent can claim under most circumstances. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're separated, you know, you're gonna have to be uh, doubly sure that you meet the requirements, uh, so. Uh, the child's social security number goes in line two, and then the year of birth. So in for 2022, if the child was born after 2003, that means that they're under 19, uh, you can skip lines 4A and 4B and go directly to line five to describe the child's relationship, and then to line six, the number of months that the child lived with you. So let's go back. Um, the daughter meets this criteria, so we didn't look at 4A or 4B. So in line 4A, was the child under age 24 at the end of the year and a student and younger than you or your spouse? That's one of the qualifying child criteria. So if the child was not under the age of 19 and younger than you or your spouse, then you go to this criteria. Was the child under the age of 24 and a college student? And if the, the child does not meet that criteria, then they filter down into line 4B. Was the child permanently and totally disabled during any part of the tax year? Uh, if not, then a child is not qualifying uh, at, for the EIC. So again, you know, you'll receive the EIC based on the qualifying children criteria. Uh, so if you go through this and you honestly uh, cannot claim the credit, then take the child off. Uh, that'll make it a little bit easier for the IRS to help you receive that tax credit. So line five, annotate the child's relationship. So son or daughter, uh, grandchild. Niece or nephew. It can be uh, any descendant of any of those people. It can be an eligible foster child as long as... Uh, they have a social security number as long as they're younger than you. And if they are a descendant of any of those relationships, they also count. If they are an officially adopted child, uh, then and the adoption process is complete, then they would be eligible as if they were your son or daughter. Um, again, they must have a social security number and not an adoption tax ID number. And then finally, the number of months that the child lived with you in the United States. So if the child lived with you for more than half of the year, but less than seven months, enter seven months to indicate to the IRS that they meet the uh, greater than half of the year criteria. And if the child was either born or passed away during the tax year, 
uh, but your home was a child's home for more than half of the time, then enter 12 months because they would be considered uh, a qualifying child under those circumstances. So uh, that's all we have for this tax form. We do cover a lot more of these topics such as uh, what the uh, criteria for permanent and total disability are, the uh, criteria for uh, qualifying children, uh, criteria for the EIC in general. You can find all of that in our article. And if you go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in schedule EIC in the search bar and you'll see our article. Uh, if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.